you know, I fell into the trap that most men fall into, which is, hey, you, you got to go out there and be the breadwinner. And you do. But why are you doing it? You got to focus on the, the purpose of it all, what God's plan is for, for men and specifically. And it, it is to be the, the leader of their home. What's going on? We are back with another episode of the podcast. I'm Brett Snodgrass with Michael Stansberry here. What's going on, Michael? What's going on, Mr. Brett? How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic, man. Thanks for being on the show today. We've, we're doing a lot together, man. I see your face more, which is cool. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's <laughs> never a bad thing, I guess, to see my own face, I guess, maybe. <laughs> That's right, man. Well, uh, if you guys are just tuning in, I want you guys to go to the last episode. That was the last episode of the Brett Snodgrass podcast. And uh, Michael actually interviewed myself, and we talked about just you know what has been going on the last few months and the last couple of years of my life. And we also went into Iron Deep, right? And we went into why is it so important? Um, you know, Where is Iron Deep going? And we talked about just this invitation of you, if you're listening, that Iron Deep really is inviting men uh, that are business owners and entrepreneurs and you know high-level business leaders to an invitation to really surrender everything that they are, their organizations, families, their lives, to for the kingdom and through Jesus Christ. So really, that is the invitation of what Iron Deep is, and we're going to do it together, right? And iron comes from iron sharpening iron. And the deep really comes from that deep level of relationship and intimacy with God and each other and other brothers. So we talked about that in the last episode, so go check that out. This is the brand new podcast that we're kind of launching out. And why are we doing this? We also talked about having more faces and more voices on this particular show. So Michael Sansbury has joined us and he is one of the faces and the voices, which I think they used to call you, the voice, uh, this going to be a podcast with us. So, <laughs> yeah, so we'll have some fun with that. Uh, so it's funny the, uh, I, you know, I, I, I've always we talked about this a little bit in the other broadcast is is or the other episode is I love uh, broadcasting and I love doing voices. I do voices for my kids all the time. And at work uh, the other day last week we read a book from uh, we read a chapter from this book called The Fred Factor. It's a good book. And they made me read it in my broadcaster voice for like four <laughs> chapters. So, and I enjoyed it. That's awesome. I ain't going to lie to you. That's awesome. What is there like, do you do character voices or do you do, you know, just the broadcaster voice and then other types of voice like that? Or do you do actually characters? Uh, I don't do characters. I do sometimes I'll do a different, uh, uh, I'll do a British voice or an Australian voice. And sometimes I can't do it like, like I won't be able to do it like right now, but I'll just do it yeah. sometime naturally. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so when I take the kids, whenever I take the kids uh, uh, to a drive through and they, you know, if we're driving, they're like, Hey, let's stop at Chick-fil-A. I'm like, if you guys want something, then we're going to have to have fun at the drive through. We'll, <laughs> we'll have to have fun with the drive through people. And that will really test if they really want food or not. And so they have to do voices they have to do voices like my voices and they have to make these people really work their uh, job really well. That's and, good. Uh, I like that. Yeah. So that's it's, what we do. It's yeah, funny. Fun. Cause I actually do voices too. When I'm reading my daughter, her bedtime story, she's only four, yes. but I'll, I'll try to do the British or the Australian voice. And my daughter, my older daughter, she works at subway and I went to the drive through one time. And I think I was like, just acting a fool and she didn't know it was me and she didn't want to like um she thought it was me but she didn't want to say anything because she really didn't know right <laughs> and if it right. wasn't me that would have been super embarrassing um but then she saw it was me when i flipped to the window but that's fun i love it <laughs> well thanks michael <laughs> that's good we're, we're gonna have to do a voice show we'll, we'll do that one of these days i know it's hard to put you on the spot and you're afraid i was gonna ask you to do it but right. I won't. So I get nervous. I get nervous. <laughs> no, sounds good, man. Well, thanks for being on the show today. Um, if you guys want to hear more about Michael Stansberry, we actually had you on episode 79. We talked about your business uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. You're a house flipper, a husband to Deidre, four kids, and man of God, man. So check that out. But what's like one of the most, yeah, what's, uh, what's like the thing that's taken up most of your emotional energy right now uh emotional energy well let's see so you know having a family is, is super fun and it's it's super great and what's what's interesting and i think you're in the four kid club too right you got yeah. four or three i got four, four kids. yeah 
So you, I got them all over the place. So you got them all over the place. And so it's one thing when you're, they're little and, you know, you can almost stay in that, uh, their little zone. It's another thing altogether when you have a 20 year old, 17 year old, 13 year old, and a nine year old, it's hard. My wife and I were talking about this last night. It's hard to, uh, you know, help the, help the little one. And then, then you got the 17 year old, all the, the stuff they're going on. It, it's, it's, it's a mind melt. Yeah. <laughs> and so if anything, it's, you know, and I'm not going to complain about it because life is, life is really, really good. And, you know, the issues, the problems that we have are very small compared to what most people have, but still there's an emotional energy and a tax on there. And as you get older, we realize, and we're, you know, we're in our mid forties. We just realize that we're not, we're not young people, parents anymore. Cause we have a nine year old and uh, it used to at, seven o'clock we'd have enough energy to just run around with them when they were little and now we're like you know go play with your older brother <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> oh yeah and go, then older go brother's around like, outside. No, i'm uh, busy uh, yeah. <laughs> i don't want any of that so that's that's probably uh that and work takes um some emotional energy we we volunteer at our church we do uh we i, I help out with the eighth graders and in, in middle school and so does Deidre. So that, that takes a lot of emotional energy as well. And, uh, but we love it. That, that's yeah. also fuel. So, yeah. uh, but that, that's, uh, that's, what's kind of taxing us right now in a good way. Yeah, no, it's good. I always love, you know, when I think about like family, like you're always one to bring up family first, I think, right. There's number one, your relationship with Christ, but you bring up family like so much. If I ever ask you a question, Hey, what's going on? Uh, what's, what's challenging you? What do you need prayer for? Typically, it's, it's most of the time family stuff. That's just one thing I, I really, I really recognize most of the time, you know, business guys, especially oh, I need prayer that, uh, I don't know, some, some, something to do with their business. So, well, it, you know, so it's, 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 uh, it did used to be that way. It, it used to be, you know, I fell into the trap that most men fall into, which is, Hey, you, you gotta go out there and be the breadwinner and you do. And that's, and then you, you do, but why are you doing it? And the other, uh, the other things that you 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 have to uh, do is is okay. You got to focus on the the purpose of it all. And as I as I dig in to what you know what God's plan is for for men specifically, and it, it is to be the the leader of their home. And so, you know, if if you're getting more, if I would say that if your stresses aren't coming from home and you're not able to, to deal with that, or you're compartmentalizing it, and you're just dealing with the stress at work or the problems at work. And, you know, I think you're not, I think there's some out of balance there. Mm -hmm. And I, and, and I, I can relate to that because I was out of balance mm -hmm. out there. Um, and I would say that even though I do bring it up, uh, that there are times when, uh, I, you know, I want to just, uh, Hey, I need to go take care of, I need to get out of the house yeah. and yeah. go, yeah. go solve another problem. <laughs> that's not have anything to do with that. Right. So, yeah. but, uh, but it still is the primary thing that we're, we're built to men are built to, to do this, to, to be leaders in the family. And, uh, that's what we need to take on and, and, and do. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I know. I love that. I love that. And I love that you said a lot of times like home is stressful, especially with four kids. And if you've got four kids, you're married, it, it's going to have challenges and stresses along the way. And if you don't have that and you're not thinking about that, then I think maybe, so maybe you're just ignoring it, right? And you're just like, I don't want to deal with it. Right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal with something over here that I can maybe have more control over. You think? So, anyways, that's that's great. So, uh, yeah, Michael, thanks again for being on the on the podcast uh, again, guys. So Michael is gonna be one of the faces and voices of this particular podcast. You're gonna see him doing some of his own interviews. So I wanted to do a couple of. of just, you know, chats with you, just so people can get to know you a little bit more. Our audience is typically used to hearing my voice. So I wanted them to start to hear your voice. And again, so Michael is going to be one of the, one of the voices that you're going to hear. We might bring on somebody here, uh, you know, soon, but again, Michael has accepted that invitation to be really, you know, all about his identity in Christ, his business in Christ, family in Christ. So uh, this is why you're here. And uh, yeah, so thanks again. So Michael, I want to talk to you just real quick, uh, just about kind of your experience with Iron Deep, number one. So you came to the First Men's Awakening. Uh, you, you know, we had that back in September. You were a part of the team, right? You actually helped lead some parts of Iron Deep, uh, the Men's Awakening event, and just kind of get your experience on it. Talk to the audience about maybe this is their first episode that uh, they don't even know 
what it is. Well, yeah. So, you know, so first, so first I knew a little bit of what to expect when I went to the, uh, the R&D retreat in September. And what I was tasked to do was to have a talk about uh, the identity uh, in Christ. But also I, what I really got out of it was I was a leader of a small group, which was I thought, OK, that'll be I'll just be a facilitator and that'll be that'll be great. But I got so much so much out of that because it was time that I got to spend with these guys that I that I, I had never met before. Um, and we just got to talk about real things and we got to, you know, really, uh, you know, we get to, we got to form really strong relationships that have continued on till to this, this, this day. Uh, and I think we're, we're, we're broadcasting this or that we're, we're doing this in January, but this, they continue, we continue to have these relationships. So the experience was, was amazing. It was first, you know, one of the things that you recognize when you, when you went, especially afterward is the real deep need to get away from um, sometime. And, and I just said it, Hey, work and family for a little bit to, uh, and the reason why is to, is to Jesus spend time alone. And, uh, but, you know, to, to maybe recharge, but also to, um, to really find out where in this specific, at, at this specific retreat, what, what our identity is and how to stay there mm. and how to maintain that, that identity. And um, my my experience there was one of uh, refreshing, and then you know at the end uh, of the retreat, I don't want to spoil it for people that go. There was just a great, um, there was just a great way that the whole retreat ended. It ended in, in a way where it was just special, I guess, to each and every one of person. But there was a lot of healing in other relationships that needed to be healed in my life. There was a pursuit of other um things that were that were that were broken that needed to be fixed and there was only you know there's only one person that can do that mm. and so it, it bubbled up to a lot of the surface for me and for other men there uh things that needed to be dealt with and so so with with iron deep it was one of those trips where a lot of things got dealt with uh and completed in a way where uh it, in in another fashion it 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 wouldn't have it wouldn't have it wouldn't have done it as well if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I love that. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing that. And uh, so one of the things that I get asked is maybe how is this a little bit different? Um, you know, and and we talked a little bit on the last episode. Where are we going? And I talked a little bit about what the invitation was. But um, I think the question people would ask was like, okay, how is this different than a church? Maybe. Um, how is the, how is it different from there? Or if you go the other way, how is it different from a mastermind group or uh, kind of just a business business group, right? So can you speak into that a little bit, your experience? Yeah, I can speak to both. And, and I'll just be radically honest about, about both. Church is, church is great. And you, I think every individual person that, that uh, follows after Jesus, you need to go to church. And my, and I would, I would encourage, uh, implore you to volunteer and, and and work at your church in some capacity because there's just so much that I've gotten out of being able to do life with other people in the church, not just go to church. Uh, uh, but, but with that being said, one of the things about being an entrepreneur, one of the things about owning your own business is uh, sometimes in church, there's not a lot of men uh, that um, have that type uh, that do that do that, that own their own business. There are a few. Uh, but there, there's not a group that's intentional about getting together and, and trying to face some of the things that we that we face as entrepreneurs, uh, because there, there's there's just a, it, it's different. It's not better or worse than anybody's job or any other person's how they um, how they go about their 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 business life or their work life. It's just it's just different, mm -hmm. and that's where Iron Deep came in. And so where it's different is these are all men that have that common thread mm -hmm. of they're an entrepreneur. And plus, they're on that, that that journey too, and there's just different struggles and different um, uh, different things that you're you're going through. And there's the because uh, as an entrepreneur, there are there are times when you're a business owner when if you are in that hustle phase or that they try to call, and and you may be you may be stuck in that phase for a while. Mm. And some people at church don't understand what that what that's like, or they don't know how to help. But with the community in Iron Deep, everybody mm. has been in that phase. Mm. Some people are in that phase. Some people are way out of that phase. And, you know, that's just one of those common threads that 
uh, that is it's just a barrier that is just broken down completely, uh, if that makes sense to everybody. So yeah, that's yeah. The, that's the difference. No, that's awesome. No, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I totally totally agree. Uh, that again at church you can find you can find other maybe entrepreneurs and business owners but you really have to kind of seek it out and like okay and you have to figure out who, who that is and I think at Iron Deep you don't have to ask that question it's like everyone really comes from that thread that's awesome so how how is it different from yeah your business group so take it on take it on the other side so you you're right. you've been a huge leader in BNI, uh, business networking, right? Uh, we've been in Collective Genius, the mastermind group, which is an amazing real estate mastermind group. So it's, how is it different from like that stuff like that? Well, so BNI, I've been a part of this BNI group for almost seven years. And uh, there are a group of men in there that love that are on the same path, love the Lord. Uh, but the intimacy that it, it took for, for Iron Deep, uh, like four hours, at Iron Deep <laughs> took years at BNI to get to a point where you could talk to them about this stuff. So we have a guy at BNI. His name is Max Fitz. His wife Deborah. Um, she has uh, um, she's cancer, and you know we we prayed at BNI for her. Mm. And you're not supposed to do you're not supposed to talk, talk about two things at BNI: politics and religion. Mm. Uh, but we, you know, our group was like, yeah, we don't care. Mm. And but that didn't happen. Uh, for years and years and years, and uh, we have a we have the same group of men, and they come in. But what what I'm saying is like that's how long it took to get deep. Mm. With Iron Deep, it was kind of like okay, we were we we were we known each other for for four hours, and we were already going through the process of hearing stories, of understanding where people were at as far as hey, you know, what your family life looked like. We were already getting into. Uh, people's lives at a, at a very early stage because that's the, that was the intentionality of it. Yeah. Um, and so that's the difference is, hey, we're intentional about uh, not only going deep, but, uh, you know, you know, uh, having this this brotherhood that is um, that, that last past a weekend, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. No, definitely. And and again, I think that that's, that's kind of where we're going with this. Uh, just more intentionality, not saying that BNI is bad. I think it's, it's a great group, not saying that the other groups are bad. That's just, uh, this is just something that I think that, uh, you know, we desired that I, I desired. I wanted to kind of have that place that put both together and kind of have that uniqueness to it. Um, and I think church is great. I think it's all great. Um, this is just another resource and a tool that, uh, that that we can really utilize just to build that depth and and have that have that intentionality already designed. We're like we're going there, and we don't have to um, we don't have to like you know take that first step and and you know it's already designed that way. So it's already a safe place, and we go where you already have that sacred trust there. So I think it's nice just to walk into that knowing that oh this is designed this way. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's uncomfortable, but it makes it a lot more comfortable because we're leading with it. Right. So, right. um, yeah, it was, it reminds me of, uh, you know, there were people that were coming to iron deep or that came that, you know, were on the fence that whole week. Should I come? Should I come? Cause it is, it, it is a risk, you know, like, um, cause you know, you, you read into it and you're like, Oh, do I, do I really want to go and do this and share this and, and, and figure these th things out. And it, it, it's, a uh, I can understand why it's, it's, um, you know, it's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but once you get over there and once you realize, you know, the, um, the thread of life that, that comes through, then it's, it gets very comfortable quickly. For sure. For sure. Awesome. So you were one of the, the people I think after the retreat, I started reaching out to uh to some individuals and really just starting to ask because obviously everyone that comes to these retreats everyone that comes to these events um some of them are gonna go all in and they're like this is this is what i want this is for me this is great i'm gonna raise my hand and accept the invitation and some of them are you know are gonna be like it's just life you're like oh that was cool but i got this other small group over here and i got this going on so and that's fine but you were one of the ones that kind of raised your hand and uh, I remember you said, hey, I, I want to be a part of it more. And I don't know what that looks like. And I was like, well, I don't know either, but let's just talk about it. And here we are. And I said, hey, I'm looking to really expand the podcast and have more faces and more voices. And you obviously, you know, fit that profile really, really well. And you raise your hand saying, I want to accept that invitation. So talk to us about like, um, 
maybe your feedback on that. Like, why did you say, I'm going to raise my hand. I want to be a part of that, whatever you guys are kind of doing. I want to, I want to do it. And you, for one, I think everything that we've asked or everything that we've done, like you've been, like you've been there, like some people, they might do this or that, but you have raised your hand and be like, I'm, I'm there, everything. So. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those things where I don't, I don't have an, like, I don't, the, the, uh, you know, when, when, when you asked, it just fit. And uh, it was kind of an audible, you know, and, and I felt, I mean, uh, God was just saying, yeah, lean into that. Mm -hmm. uh, selfishly, you know, I have a son that's 20. I have another son that's 13. I have daughter 17. And, and uh, but I want them to see, uh, I want my influence to, uh, I want them to know me more for, for this type of stuff mm -hmm. than business owner. I want them to know me as a, as a father and an influencer. And one of the things that I, I really, uh, again, this is, um, this is what I just enjoy is I, I enjoy, uh, seeing other young men and other men thrive. And I, I want to see them lead their families. Uh, if, one of the things that I get frustrated with, if you just, if you stop working and you stop thinking about your family and you just turn on the news, our culture is just gross mm, and yeah. our culture is gross just because uh, dudes are dumb and gross and, and we're, we're, we're just doing the wrong thing. Yeah. And one of the things that's like, okay, well, what do I, how do I have an impact? Well, lead your family. Okay. Mm. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do that and I'm going to fail, but I'm going to keep doing, I'm going to fail forward. I'm going to mess up. Got a great, um, my spouse is very forgiving and we'll, we'll, we'll do that. But what else? And, you know, I think the biggest impact we can have is to show men, um, hey, this is, you know, this is the, the best part of life is having a family. Mm. Uh, the other stuff is is um, is good, can be good. But what's the best part? Yeah. And so I want to I want to selfishly show I, I get I, I, these these other men that, hey, this this is the this is the path. This is this is where you should be going. And this is and these are other men. And this, these are other people of influence that you need to to look into and to and to be influenced by. Mm, so, I love that. Uh, so that hit that that hit that. So, okay, that that fits what part of my purpose is uh, in in this phase of life. So, yeah, I think if you would have caught me ten years ago, I'd have been like, ah, you know, no. But it just it just came at the at the the right time. Yeah. I think, yeah, I talk about like seasons of life. I think that we're both airing in that season of life. Like I said, I just turned 43 this past week and you start to think about like, man, okay, I'm going to go into my mid upper, upper forties and that starts to get pretty real. You're like, okay, what do I really want to be doing? I want to waste time. Like I want to waste time. Yep. Right. Do you ever nope. think like that? <laughs> yeah. I'm done wasting All time. <laughs> I'm done wasting time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think about we were, the other day, I think, uh, uh, I was watching Interstellar with my daughter because she wanted to see it. She hadn't seen it. And my son is like, I've watched that 15 times. And I was thinking about all the movies that I've watched like 10 or 15 times. It's like, man, I wasted a lot of time. So it's, it's fun. That's just a little anecdote. Yeah. Just throwing it out there. No, that's good. That's good. Um, so one of the things that you want to really help men and number one, lead your family. You want to help other men lead as well in a healthy way. And one of the things that I've, I've realized is that there's a lot of content already out there, right? So there's, there's podcasts, YouTube channels. I mean, some people are coming up with, with a YouTube video every single day, right? And that's one person. Every day. Yeah. And just yeah. think about how many people are doing that. There's so much content out there. And, uh, so, you know, we're doing this podcast, we're speaking, this is a tool for iron deep, but, but really the thing that I have realized is really, if you want to really help a man and you want to help sharpen him and, um, you know, get into his life that really you can't do that with very many people. You can only do that with kind of like that small community that I like, I think in my mind, like, you know, who, like who have I been influenced by? And I can think of, you know, authors, maybe books I've read that have kind of like, you know, inspired me, but there's a, there's a couple of people that really poured into me that really took me aside. And, um, you know, they met with me, they talked to me, they poured into me. There was, but there's only like a couple. Right. And I've realized right. that, and I think the iron deep is just, again, 
that small community that, you know, I don't think we're going to be this huge, massive thing. And if we do grow and, and scale, I think that's, that's good. But, but I feel like we have to have that intimacy, that intimate component of small, of smallness and small groups. And I think that obviously, you know, our first retreat, we had 20 some people there and that was, that was a part of that, but we split that into even, you know, groups of four, like you said. So would you agree with that? Maybe think about your own life yes. on yeah. like who have, who's influenced you and then, yeah. Talk to us about that. Yeah. I, if, yeah thinking through that, there, there have been three or four people besides my parents uh, that have had a, uh, an impact. And, you know, they were, you know, and I, I think about those people a lot. I think about these this one couple that when I was in school, my parents went through a divorce and they were very intentional about how they uh, they noticed something was they just noticed something was off about me and they they poured into me. And then in my mid twenties, I had uh, a couple guys from church that were older men, uh, that I, that they pursued me. And, and, uh, but that's, that's, that's what it is. How I, I, I'm, I, we want to have as much, we get caught into this, Hey, we want to have inf influence and followers, but, uh, it is, if we just look back on our life and we see, Hey, what, what, what really does work. Mm. And that's the way it works mm -hmm. it is it's, you know, you want to have a few, um, people that you do that with, because, you know, you, you only have, as you said earlier, I don't want to waste time. Well, you, you know, you, if you, if you, if you go deep with a few people, it's going to have a lot more lasting impact on them as they kind of lead their life. Uh, and there's nothing better. Uh, my wife and I went to, on a Guatemala trip with high schoolers back in 19 and they still, you know, I'm still, still talking to these kids and just you know um uh, you know at least once or twice a week or they'll send an email or they'll talk about the trip uh but those are things that you know you just you just want you want more of um but yeah you're just gonna be mindful of the of the do you want influence or do you want followers or what does that you know what does that look like for you yeah so you gotta be mindful of that yeah and i think yeah we get into that trap we get into the to the trap of wanting more uh, and we think if we have more followers, we have more influence, you know? Right. And I don't know if that's always true. Yeah. Right. No, uh, <laughs> no. Selfishly we do, we do, we did, uh, so, uh, we did a, I did an Instagram reel with my daughter and, uh, it, and she was every, every, every day. Hey, how many, how many people looked at it? How many people looked at it? Mm. And, uh, but, and that's how we're that's how we're trained now mm. to, to do that's, that's, that's how we get our uh, dopamine fix. I think. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Um, let me ask you just a couple of questions. We kind of wrap up the show here. So obviously you're stepping in to, you know, be more part of this podcast, super excited about that. Um, you know, you're making your list of, 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 we're talking about who, who do we want to on this show? If you guys are listening in, we want to hear from you guys, like who would you want to us to interview? And I asked, um, I asked Michael before I said, Hey, let's say there's no limits and I don't want to be on the, on the spot cause that makes you nervous. But if there was no limits at all and you can interview anyone that you wanted to, like who would be, who would be on that list? Who would be someone? Do you have an answer? Who would be on, on the list of, yeah. uh, just anybody entrepreneurs at or just, anybody at all? Just oh, anybody I'm, like there's no limits. You know, I've, I've been listening to a lot of a guy named Patrick David Bett. Um, he's a guy that's on YouTube. Uh, and he has this a value to entertainment. I think he would be interesting um, uh, to to have on. Um, who else? Let's see. Uh, there's a guy I follow. Uh, I listen to a lot. His name is Douglas Wilson. I'd love to have him on. Um, you know, you know, I'd love to have Trump, of course. You know, that'd be hilarious. Uh, I'd love to have Biden. You know, just go. Let's, let's just go interview the president and yeah. see if we can't launch <laughs> launch this thing. Um, let's go. Uh, That's awesome. Else, yeah. That's good. Um, Any sports? Yeah, sports people or uh, like broadcasters. I know you're in the broadcast field right now, but I know that you might not listen to that as much. Um. um so, you know, actually I'm a big Arkansas Razorback fan, so I could I'd have Musselman on. He's the you know, coach of the Razorbacks. Uh we lost two of our star players, and so we're gonna be it's gonna be tough for us this year. Yeah. Uh let's see. So broadcasters uh, that are there there's a guy named John Morgan who used to do the Sunday night baseball at ESPN. He has a great voice. Mm. He would be fun to have on. Um 
and, and uh, of course, if dead or alive, Harry Carey. That'd be a fun broadcast if you have Harry Carey. Oh, yeah. Brett, you know, you, yeah, oh, yeah, you, yeah, you know. I know this is yeah, Harry but, Carey uh, here. Hi, hi. Yeah. <laughs> so he would be, he'd be he hilarious. Was good. He was good. Um, no, that's awesome. Well, hey, might make that yeah. list. You never know. I'll make it. Ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll do Sound, it. Sounds good. So as we kind of wrap up this podcast episode here, um, you know, we're, I know that you're kind of in this season of transition too. You got 20 year old, 17 year old, 13 year old, right? Like, where do you, where do you want these next five years to look like for you? Cause that's a huge transition for you. You're going to have two now out of the house. You got one who's getting ready to be out of the house, right? These next five years are, are uh, just a, a great time for you, right? Instrumental time. So like any feedback on like, what do you want this next five years to look like for you? Well, one of the things that my wife and I talked about is we want to make, we love, we live in Memphis. We live in Bartlett. We have for a while. And I think that we'll always have some sort of home here, but we, we, we are thinking about having another uh, place to live months out of the year. And, and then, you know, one of the things about being an entrepreneur is you get to learn how uh, to run a, run a business. Uh, and, and if, if you can run your business independent of location, that's one of the things that we're trying to figure out. Cause we love again, spending time, um, other places like in Guatemala or in Florida. And we, we want to do a, a lot more traveling. And, uh, we do have a, one of the things that we have a nine-year-old. And so we feel like we got, you know, 10, nine more years of, you know, making sure that we're here, here and before we can do the, the empty nester kind of thing. Um, but, uh, but more importantly, you know, one of the things that we, we want to just continue to do is just serve, uh, where we're, where we're planted, serve in our, in our church and, um, you know, we've been in the, the middle school and high school for a, for a long time. And we have, and, you know, it's like with anything, if you, if you, we have deep, deep rooted relationships there, you want to see that, um, that ministry street grow. And so, yeah. but, um, I want to just, I want to see the people that are associated with me, my family, the, the employees that we have, uh, just thrive. So that's, that's kind of, kind of where, where we're headed. Yeah. No, that sounds awesome, man. That sounds good. Um, that's that's great. We're kind of wrapping up the show here with Michael Sansbury, guys. And uh, thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, any last, just kind of wisdom or feedback for the audience as they really start to reflect on their own life, uh, whatever the season they're in, uh, relating to like Iron Deep, what what they can we can offer them with that with that organization. Any type of uh, yeah feedback or advice for them? Yeah, if you're if you're listening to this and you're you're uh, uh, associated with Iron Deep or know a little bit about it, uh, I would just, again, just be, uh, I would just encourage you to find out a little bit more about it and find out a little bit more about the retreat. And if you, um, uh, and if you knew somebody that's in the retreat or if somebody, somebody that maybe sent you a link or sent you an email and said, Hey, check this out, get back to them and ask them, Hey, why, why did you send that? And, and, uh, or, or ask them some more information. And if they went to the retreat, ask them about their experience, because that's where, um, you know, if you're, if you're going to want to, if you're going to go on the retreat, you're going to go because somebody sent you here or you have, uh, you've been, you, you're, you're watching this for a reason. Mm. And because, uh, one of the things as, as you grow older and you're 43, I'm 47, you understand that, that everything happens for a reason, like, every, like all things, um, that even are communicated to you. There's a, there's a reason why you're, you're, you're here. So that's where I would say lean into that. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks, Michael. Again, for being on the podcast, we're going to see more of Michael Sansbury in future podcasts with his own interviews. So you guys make sure if you like Michael, uh, go to the review section on iTunes, leave us a review for this podcast as we transition. And thanks again. Go check out irondeep.com and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Thank you. 